how do we know what are the tests, you know, and what are the tests supposed to test for? Yes. So the, so there are several tests. So like the CDC test is the one that we probably should talk about. Cause that's the yes. one that will be used here. So if you think about like places in the rest of the world, people are doing millions and millions of tests. And even in China, like they're saying now that they're, it's getting contained. They're not getting like, they're not getting more cases. So they have tests, right? Why? And why are we having a shortage of tests? So right now, I think I don't even think we've had over 2000 people tested. And the first uh, batch of tests were off target. So what that means is like basically when you're given a test, we are looking to see if there are kind of like the genome of the virus present in your in your in your sample. Right. So we're looking to see for a match. And. In order for us to look for a match, we have to know what we're looking for. And so the first test that the CDC released had some like off target probes, which means it was it was not specific enough. So it was generating false negatives. So what that means is that people who were uh, considered to be controls might not have been controls and people like the test was just erroneous. And so one of the things that I think is interesting is because fault is that, Dr. Jeff, it's it's rushing. Trump. No, it's, Trump. it's rushing. So apparently this was due to contamination. Um, and so the test is really, really sensitive and any type of contamination can throw things off. And also the probes that were selected were kind of like not the best probes to select. So a couple of things. One, why couldn't we just borrow some tests from somebody else? Who already <laughs> have done it. And they Who's don't. already mm. done it. Oh, we um, don't have relationships with them because there's a there's a trade war. <laughs> So the people that actually have the tests that work, we, we, we're not talking the to them. people who are diagnosing people. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking to them. Right. Um. So like, I think my I'm I'm not scared of of Corona like at all. Like, I kind of just want to get it and get it over with. Like, what? Yeah. Like, I heard somebody else say that. Why not? Like, if we look at the mortality rate, it's super low. We're looking at like 3.4% right now. Now, granted, that can be underestimated because, one, people are untested and people um, who don't have sim- – like a lot of people are asymptomatic. Right. So and I'm we sure talking those- about that too. Carriers versus people who are infected. 866-801-8255. Uh, Percentage-wise, fewer people die from the actual flu. So this is high. 3 to 4% is a high death rate. And that you can carry this for 14 days undetected mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. spread it is a problem and then it lives on surfaces so that's like a really big thing too right like it can live on a surface for 72 hours so you think about people who are catching the train if somebody wipes their nose and then put it on the pole and you put your hand on the pole if you don't wash your hands or anything like that like and you put it to your face i mean it's a wrap got it it's a wrap but like i said i want to get it and get it over with one i'm healthy i'm really low risk i would like, if there's going to be a spread, which it probably will be, because it seems like we're also not doing a great job of containing this thing. Um, if I get it, I'm, I'm the likelihood of me dying is very low. OK, but will you now have antibodies to protect yeah, you yeah, from yeah. it ever happening? again? Yeah. So it's I mean, yeah. So that's the, the that's good, the advantage. And as somebody that had chicken pox last year, the year before last. Oh, wow. Yes. You didn't have shingles. No, nah, never. Never you, had chicken pox my whole entire life. How? Exactly. Well, Where did you grow up? Jersey. In a bubble? No. I was in Jersey in them streets, in them Jersey streets. You just never, never got had, the chicken never pox. Never had the chicken pox. You have siblings? Yes. And they never got it either? No. I think my brother did have it. And you didn't get it I from never him? Got, no, he's younger, much younger. So, no, I never had the chicken pox. I got it uh, from somebody two years ago, and I was horrified. You know? How was that? I got the shingles at 25. But you had chicken pox. Well, you have to have, yeah. Right. Actually, it was not bad at all. It was one people said pleasant outside of the bumps because there were a lot of bumps in places that they shouldn't have been everywhere. Bumps mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. I wasn't I wasn't on my ass the way I expected to be. <laughs> okay. Like this is way worse what I'm going through right now than my chicken pox experience. Well, also, now that you have chicken pox and you're at high risk for shingles, too. Thank you. What is that? So shingles is uh, another version of the chicken pox that you get later in life. Right. But I'm already later in life. So I don't think I'm getting shingles. I don't deserve shingles. I but shingles, shingles is very, and they have a vaccine for it now, but it's very, very scary in in the older population. I want no shingles. <laughs> I don't want them on my house. It's just painful. It's just very painful. So what'd you experience? Well, I woke up one day and I had like aches and I thought, cause I work out. I was like, oh, I'm just like sore. And I was dating a guy who was in med school 
and he told me I had bed bugs. I had this rash, and he's like, oh, you have bed bugs. Yeah. So you still dating him? No. Okay, yeah, that's rude. He wasn't, I don't know how, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> I told the people in the building, I was like, yeah, I got I got bed bugs, and they were like, if you have bed bugs, the world is going to end. Like, we got to do all this stuff. So then I, I was working at Mount Sinai at that time, and as soon as I walked in there, a resident looked at me, and she's like, you have shingles. Because the rash, when it when it comes, it's... um. It develops in your in your spine, and so whenever you get it, the rash is only on one side of your body because the way the neural system is set up, it's like lateral, right? And so people will get the rash, and it'll only be on your left side, or it'll only be on your right side, and you can get it on your stomach, you can get it on your face, but it's a very like um, it's a very painful thing. Does it's, it itch? It doesn't itch, and the rash looks like little glossy red bubbles. Yeah. But I was, like, one day away of, like, if I didn't go into the doctor that day. Full-blown. Yeah. I wouldn't have been. The medication wouldn't have worked. Okay. Now, right. um, as we talk about this coronavirus, and you said something which is horrifying that you just want to get it and get it over with. <laughs> um, I know that there's a medical reason for that, and part of it is building up your antibodies, right? So going to Ghana taking the malaria pills and then getting the yellow any. fever. Right. I think it's bogus. But they didn't let us in the country without having a card fever. that said you have your malaria and you got your yellow fever. Mm -hmm. I Tell, think that's, a, I don't know. I think it is too. I think it's a money thing. Okay. But now I got a shot that I didn't de deserve to get either. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad to have. For right? 10 years, I can't get yellow fever. That's, that's not, I mean, All right. so you should be adventurous and go I travel. I saw nobody <laughs> with yellow fever anywhere in Africa. No, especially not in the crowd. <sighs> All right. 866-801-8255. I was talking about Cuomo, the governor of New York, being a G and a boss because he said the government is not giving us tests. There's a bottleneck with the CDC. The CDC has been defunded by this Trump administration. He's partnering with a private uh, corporation, a private institution to administer the tests, to develop the tests. What do you think about that? I think it's fine if it's free. Okay. You think it's not going to be free? I don't How know. How are you going to pay charge me to take a test? So that was the thing. I think uh, Bernie Sanders tweet. No, he was tweeting about um, a vaccine. I think that should be free, too. But um, I think the test should be free. But the question is, is that the government is not funding the CDC to make more tests. Then why would they fund a private entity to do it? No, the not the federal government. New yeah, York is it the New York state government? New York that's state is doing that. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think it's fine as long as it's free. I mean, if you think about it, so we have the CDC and we have these government structures that are experts, but we also have a lot of people who work in the biotech industry in the private sector who are experts too. And I would say we, because I also work in biotech, are more trained to like produce results faster and quicker because that's. Our whole business model is centered around that. So I think that's great, especially with people like LabCorp and like these really big private Quest. entities that Quest. Yeah, they're all used to doing. This is what they do. All right. So what can you tell us that's going to calm us down and stop the panic or? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. I Jeff. I'm a numbers person. I just lean into numbers. You know, like let's think. We all play spades. Spades is all about numbers and probabilities. That's how I learn probabilities. Are you good? I'm I'm very good. <laughs> Challenge. Listen, I learned how to multiply playing dominoes and I learned statistics playing spades. Like my parents, that's what we did growing up. And I'm from New Orleans, so we play a lot of cards. But anyway, back to the numbers. Yeah, numbers are everything. And I just want people to be very realistic about the numbers. If you do develop, if you do if you are diagnosed one, how accurate is the test? So that's one thing, right? What are the symptoms that you're having? How would you know if the <laughs> test is accurate? You, we've been trained to trust people that are untrustworthy. So my my thing my thing would just to be logical. Like if you're if you obviously are developing symptoms and you have a fever, go to the doctor. Obviously, um, if you are developing mild symptoms and you don't have a fever, stay home. You know, clean, wash your hands, clean things, you know, like keep everyone together, be protective. But at the same time, if the worst case scenario happens and you do contract the disease, evaluate how at risk are you of something serious are happening. Are you elderly? Are, are you, you elderly? Poor, do you have pre-existing conditions? conditions yes. <laughs> and we've been talking about this. Are you black? <laughs> right. Uh, there's a conspiracy theory that black people won't get coronavirus. That makes zero sense. But... <laughs> Why does it make zero sense from a genetic standpoint? Um, 
because we're talking about a virus, right? Um, and I would say when we think about how viruses, you know, invade your cells, like one very, very, very lofty hypothesis, and I'm stretching here. Um, so I don't know how many people are familiar with the CRISPR technology. This is gene editing. I think we talked about this before. There's a documentary coming out actually tomorrow called Human Nature. And um, I'm doing a panel for this documentary. It was uh, executive produced by Dan Rather. And it's all about gene editing. What I like about the documentary is it's a first genetics documentary that is focusing on a young black child and a disease. I feel like a lot of the genetic documentaries are always of like these little white kids and kids, you know, obviously we should be saving everybody, but I always wonder like, are the black kids not sick? Anyway. Um, but the way that CRISPR was discovered was through a viral infection in bacteria. And essentially the bacteria were able to edit its own genome so that it created its own like antibodies against viruses. And so the likelihood of something like that happening, one, we have never seen that happen naturally in humans, so there's that. But that would be kind of one way that would mean that like someone could not get it, you know, if our if our um if our genomes were automatically and then we would have to also know what to look for and be exposed to it too, right? So I don't know. There's a lot of things out there, but or it could no, be a miracle. It's just <laughs> The seventh seal opened and this is God's, the plague. Rep- God's reparations coming through. <laughs> I'm saying during the Black Death. Um, no, I'm not going to bring that to the table. All right. I want to bring stuff to the table. I mean, but even looking at the um, one thing I will say that it is scary about coronavirus is we look about when we think about the 1918 um, uh, epidemic Spanish that flu? happened. Yes. And two uh, percent of the population died. And that was before people were like transient that was before people could like catch get planes on a plane and, and go, do stuff right, right. two percent of the two percent of the population the entire died. world population that's crazy so that part it scares me because it, what it is it's just like the spread of it and that's what we want because if it gets out of control and we can't handle it then that's a completely different issue and problem 